I got down into the, I'm gonna say it was probably almost 30, if not 30 degrees last night. It uh, got really cold, but I am um, been able to kind of enjoy the fact that we have been doing the wood burning stove last couple of nights. Get the house all warm and toasty. Come on, chickens. Figured I'd let them out. Oh, it's a nice sunny day. I think that's a bald eagle. There he flies. It's hard to tell, I know, for you guys. I do love when we see some bald eagles out here. Probably didn't help that I let the chickens out, but Miss Violet. Miss Violet's gonna stand guard for me. Right, girl? Yeah, no, you're gonna go for a walk. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. She might not stand guard. She might go for a walk with me. Um, but right now we've got three roosters in the flock and they're all doing a really good job keeping the girls, you know, protected and uh, together. And they do. They really do. They, they absolutely will tell them, hey, it's time to go. I have to do some stuff up in the apothecary. We got a shipment in that um, I have been eager to unbox. Like, eager, eager. I'm walking over here for the first time in a, in a couple of days with my camera and a lot has changed <laughs> since the last video that you have probably seen, but um, oh, the apothecary is looking absolutely beautiful. My husband and my son have been working so diligently on the apothecary and <laughs> I don't know what I love more. I don't know if I love the apothecary more or the fact that it's, there's so much love put into this. I think it must be a tie. But definitely the love that has been put into it is pretty phenomenal. Okay, you guys ready? Looks a lot different than last time. I swear I suck at big reveals. So yeah, here's your big reveal. The little cabin is no longer red anymore. We picked up some stain for the deck and I'm gonna make some shutters. What do you think? It probably looks so much smaller on camera than it does in person. The cabin, the apothecary, actually the beekeeper's apothecary is a 20 by 24 old cabin, old hunting cabin that we've been putting a little bit of love back into. And I have, if you guys are new to my channel, I have been documenting our flip for this entire time. So if you guys are interested in seeing what it looked like before, um, I will put the videos up, but look at it. <laughs> it's looking adorable. There's still some work that we need to do. Um, we have to, we're gonna do something pretty underneath of it. And then I'm, planning on doing some landscaping, bringing in some medicinal plants that we can grow outside. So it'll be not only a nice educational opportunity to show people, hey, this is the plant. This is what it looks like. This is how to harvest it. And this is what you do with it. Um, that's kind of the things that I want to do. Not only that, but it also is so good to have certain plants brought in for the pollinators. And I know our little winged friends definitely appreciate it. but. Look how pretty it is! So get some visual with me. The stain on the deck is going to be a lighter colored just stain, nothing too crazy. Um, I think we picked a semi-transparent so it'll look really nice. And then we're going to do, I'm going to actually make 
some shutters to put on here, maybe add some little decorative pieces to it. Um, if I can go find some from like a reclaim store and then possibly some planter boxes in the window. We are talking about the color of the, the front door and um, making decisions on whether or not we want to keep it white or not. And we'll keep you posted on that, but it is definitely looking completely stunning. I absolutely love the way it's all coming together. So it's still a little cold in here. We have not gotten the heating and AC unit all hooked up um, for right now, but I do have a little heater in here. So the other day I got a couple of clips of us picking up our freeze dryer. It came in pretty fast and we picked it up and I and my husband dropped it off here in the apothecary. We figured this would be probably the best place for it because I did read that they do make a little bit of noise and I didn't really have much other space inside my house uh, other than possibly my basement, but we have the space up here. And how awesome is it for us to be able to, to have it up here and this could be this could be another opportunity for us to teach and show people how it works, what it does, especially when it comes to freeze drying herbs. In the last couple of nights, I have not had an opportunity to stop and, and come up here and unbox it and take you guys with me. All right, here we go. Okay, that was a lot easier than what I got. Uh, I wonder if I can lift. Okay, this one does not look like it's all the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, the other side is the face. So I'm trying to do this big reveal and it's, I'm showing you the back. So let's rearrange this for a second. I feel like I need a drum roll, but Okay, this is really cool. Grab one of me. Ready? One, two, three. So we ended up getting the Premier pump, Premier vacuum pump with our harvest rate. And in this box, we have about 50 of the Mylar bags. What's really cool is that you can choose to store your freeze dried fruit long-term in these bags. I think it's about, it's about 25 years for storage. And then they also have the little oxygen absorbers um, I have been seeing a lot of people put their freeze dried food in, in jars, which I think is really pretty and also pretty functional when it comes to just having it freeze dried and ready. We got extra trays, which is going to make things nice because when I do my batches, I'm going to pre freeze and then have things pretty much ready in the freezer, ready to go into the harvest rate so that we can kind of keep a steady flow of a freeze drying cycle on and it'll help with time prep for me as well. So we've got a handful of extra trays, the oil filter, some oil, we've got all the tubing. I do need to sit down and read how to set that up and I will be doing that, obviously. And they also sent us the sealer, which is really nice when it comes to those Mylar bags and sealing them for continued use later down the road.
quite ready to get everything plugged in quite yet. I think I am going to do one good, good reading before I get anything really going, just to confirm. I had to stop setting up the harvest rate right because we had to go to a birthday party. I wanted to kind of explain really quick what I did in the process of setting up the freeze dryer. So right now I have it running on its first cycle. This is the sound of it. It's really not too, too loud. This is the Premier vacuum pump. Um, I put some oil in it and I got it right at the max line. Hooked up the tubes, plugged it all in together. I will tag a few channels that I watched on how they set up their freeze dryer. I read the owner's manual, but for me, I'm visual. And I found two channels that I thought were really, really helpful. One is Deep South Homestead, and the other one is Retired at 40. If you are interested more into freeze drying, check out their channels. I'm a baby freeze dryer, we're just getting started, but Retired at 40, they have been freeze drying for many years and they had a lot of stuff. If you go over and check out their YouTube channel, tell them I said hi and make sure to go follow them as well because they've got some pretty cool stuff happening on their homesteads. I have about 14 more minutes on this test trial then I can turn on the pump and get that rocking and rolling and then I have to, it has to hit a certain number but I am gonna run a first batch this evening I believe um, which is going to be the bread with vinegar to help pull out the smell. Um, it's not really a bad smell. It's just more of a, like an industrial kind of kind of smell, but My freeze dryer came with a freeze drying guidebook So I've been pretty excited to sit and kind of look at some of the things that we can freeze dry by flipping through some of this I think it's gonna be pretty awesome for me to get a few ideas for Christmas presents and doing some gifts like freeze drying ice cream I know I've seen a lot of candy. A lot of people have freeze dried a lot of candy. I am really excited about going to the grocery store and seeing if there's anything that's on sale and buying it and then freeze drying what we can. That's gonna help cut down costs. Um, one of the girls, I watched one girl on TikTok who shared where she went to the grocery store and bought like 20 pineapples for 50 cents a piece and chopped them all up and then freeze dried all the pineapple and put them in jars and then she put some in mylar bags to, to store. I like her thought process on her freeze drying and how she schedules it into her life. She looks and sees what's on sale, purchases, and then at the end of the week, she will take all of her leftovers that she has in her refrigerator and freeze dries them all and puts them and stores them away for when it's needed. Now we're pretty lucky here to have pigs and chickens and really all of our scrap food goes right back to our, we have a bonfire outside. So my husband wanted to come in and see the freeze dryer, but all of our scrap food goes right back to our animals. So I am gonna kind of miss doing that, but there are some scraps that they can still enjoy, especially when it comes to banana peels and all of that. Snacks and baby food, oh my. One of the things that I am pumped about is the fruits. Turning the fruit into powder, that's an awesome way to kind of incorporate it into your diet, especially with smoothies. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. And I went ahead and did a test mode on it. The test mode is I turned the freezer part on. I had that running for about 30 minutes. And then after that, well after the 30 minute mark, I went ahead and turned the vacuum on. And now this number, see the 470RR? That needed to get to 500, which we're now below that, so. I'm saying done. <laughs> okay, and it goes back to the front. Now I'm gonna open up this valve. Any water or anything that's in it, any air. Let that kind of run out. I'm letting all that out. I'm gonna go ahead and do a burn load on it, which is I'm gonna use bread. I think I have some hamburger buns that I, I can use. And they are gonna have some vinegar on it. I'm gonna put them on the trays and then go ahead, put them in here and get it going. So we had some extra hamburger buns and some just white vinegar. They say by doing this, it actually pulls out the 
the kind of the new smell and uh, and for taste on your food. So I'm gonna get this thing loaded up and get it going. And then after this, hopefully that means we can start freeze drying and putting some food away. You know, all the stuff that we've been growing. So I went ahead and turned it on. I'm shutting off that valve on the back to make sure that any of the moisture is coming in. This is just bread. We're gonna do about four trays and they're moist with uh, just white vinegar. So. Okay, that tray. with the bread on it. We're gonna hit continue. Because now I feel like this is probably gonna take a little while, but that's why it's up here. We can set it up, get it rolling. So far, so good. We'll check back in a little while, and let you know how my first run went. If anyone is interested in purchasing your own freeze dryer from Harvest Strike, I've got an affiliate link that I will put down below and it just helps support our channel. It also helps track any of the sales and link it back to, to our channel. I am so excited about this. <laughs>